Welcome to Raising New Stars, and I'm your host, Zoe Love, and today we're going to be talking about conduct disorder and oppositional defiance disorder in children, and what that looks like and how we can help. So um, these two diagnoses I put together because they're very similar, and they're high-risk diagnoses. Oppositional defiance disorder and conduct disorder. We're going to look in the DSM-5, which is the American Psychiatric Association, holy grail, and this is where all providers and professionals basically get the diagnosis and the definition. So oppositional defiance disorder. In order to have it, you these are the symptoms that you must exhibit. Temper, often loses temper, is often touchy or easily annoyed, is often angry and resentful, um, argumentative, defiant behavior, often argues with authority figures um, such as teachers, parents, um, principals, law enforcement, often defies or refuses to comply with requests from authority like rules, um, tends to deliberately annoy people or blames others for their mistakes and behavior. This is oppositional defiance disorder. Okay, um, so let's look at conduct disorder. Conduct disorder is a level higher than oppositional defiance disorder, a, a whole, a whole nother nother level. level. And when your child has this, they exhibit behaviors that are aggressive towards people and animals. Um, that it often is a bully, threatens or intimidates others, uh, often initiates physical fights. Uh, uses weapons, is cruel to people, is cruel to animals, uh, steals, uh, uh, forces someone into sexual activity, destroys property, property um, theft, breaks rules. Okay, I, I think you can see the point. These are really two serious diagnoses. And a lot of times when we diagnose children with this as therapists, child therapists. Um, we see the child going through truancy in school, um, breaking the law, they have chins, involved in DYS, runaways. A lot of children in foster care fit this description um, or have this diagnosis. You have children uh, suffering in homelessness, uh, drug abuse, prostitution, gang involvement, and the list goes on. Now, how does a child get oppositional defiance disorder? Now, one of the connections that I see is three main things. One is, you're probably like, what, when I say this? Spoiled. Parents who spoil their children, and I mean like, Give them everything in anything. Um, any child can be spoiled if their parent doesn't say no. So usually children will defy authority, uh, will become violent if someone does say no. So they can exhibit opposition, defiance disorder symptoms, and conduct disorder symptoms if they don't have the balance at home. So the spoiled children. Neglect is huge. If there's a parent that... Um, um, unfortunately, may be drug addicted, who stays, or maybe has a mental illness, who might stay in the bedroom for days, don't come out, child's not being fed, have to survive on their own. Some, somewhere along the way, this child figures that they cannot trust adults, that adults aren't responsible, that perhaps they're more responsible than adults, and that they know best. So neglect often ushers oppositional defiance disorder and conduct disorder. Get, now, peer pressure could take away our child and then they can develop oppositional defiance disorder and get caught up in conduct disorder. So in order to help our adolescents who uh, are challenged with oppositional defiance disorder, who have these really risky and dangerous behaviors that not only put them at risk, but others in the community. If we want to really help reprogram that child, change the change that behavior around, we have to go extreme like this diagnosis. So, remember that movie, Lean on Me? And you had Principal Joe Clark? If you haven't seen that movie, watch this that, that movie because that is part of the answer 
Um, he was that guy. Principal Joe Clark was the example. He was that guy. And he was able to turn a school around. And I bet it was basically 70% of conduct disorder and oppositional defiance disorder in school. He turned the whole school around. And um, 90% of the students graduated out of this inner city, high risk, chronic area. It, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So and we need to have support like Principal Joe Clark in our lives. We have to find people like that for our children. They could be the therapist, um, the coach, the minister, the teacher, big brother. And if you can't find that person to help you turn your child around from learning to only trust themselves or their peers, then you become similar to Principal Joe Clark. Please like share the video, make a comment below, let me know what you think, if I was missing something, if you could relate to it, ask questions, if you want some more clarity about oppositional defiance disorder or conduct disorder. And like I always say, caregivers, lean on me if you're not strong. Stay healthy, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on and keep our baby safe for it won't be long.